Today we're going to talk about a one day lesson plan you can use to teach about Cinco de Mayo in your Spanish classroom. But before we really get into that, I wanna to talk to you about why do I teach about Cinco de Mayo at all? Because I know that somebody out there is gonna be like, it's not even a holiday. It's not a celebration at all. Why would you celebrate it? I know that and you know that, but our students don't necessarily know that. So that's why I teach about Cinco de Mayo at all because then they learn and then they're not like woohoo fiesta chips and salsa who's gonna have a party in spanish class today if you have this lesson at least once somewhere in your levels you probably won't have to hear that again the other thing is is that's why i only spend one day on it because then we get that we learn the history we figure out that it's not that big of a deal and we move on Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley, aka Senorita Spanish. Thanks so much for being here. The exact virtual field trip that I like to use with my students is available for download on my website. I will make sure to link that in the description for you. If you haven't tried a virtual field trip with your students, I have one that you could just download and try out to explore the Dominican Republic. And if you would like to learn more about how to do a virtual field trip in your classroom, make sure you check out my playlist on virtual field trips that I will link for you here. So just a little bit of background information for you. This kind of activity I have used with 6th through 12th grade students in Spanish 1 and 2 and exploratory 45 to 50 minute class period. So just so you know where I'm coming from with this lesson plan and the levels that I've used it with. So in our 45 to 50 minute class period, this is how I usually break it all down. We start with our usual start of class routine. I have another video that details the start of class routine. So if you don't know what that is, check the description below. After our start of class routine, which is usually about 10 minutes long, we move into our daily routine for that day of the week. I also have a blog post detailing all of the daily routines I like to use. I'll link that for you in the description below. After the start of class and the daily routine, I have students take out their devices. Once they all have their devices out, I give them the link to the map and we just give them some time to explore. And the reason I like to have them start with just the map and not any of the comprehension activities or the things that go with the map is because I found that if they have time to just like explore and get into it on their own, chances are they're going to actually like dig into the information. Whereas sometimes I have found that if I hand out like the comprehension questions or hand out the graphic organizer, kids get really focused on the information that they are supposed to find rather than exploring the information provided. So if I just give them some time to just check it out and look at the readings and look at the pictures and look at the videos and do that on their own, they're much more likely to kind of have a sense of discovery as they're learning the information rather than this is the information that I need to find out I'm gonna go get it. After they've had about five minutes to maybe 10 minutes to explore the map, I will pass out either the graphic organizer or the comprehension questions or both. And the comprehension questions and the graphic organizer both come in a digital format or printable format. However, if I have my students in the classroom and they are physically present, I personally prefer to give them the physical copy of the activities. I just think it's a lot easier for them to handle navigating the map and like clicking around on all the markers and checking out all the information and then recording the information on the physical sheet of paper in front of them. Maybe I'm old fashioned, but I think that's simpler and I know that I would, like personally, I would prefer to do that. If I have them doing the activities digitally, then I just post it in Google Classroom and say, okay, here it is. And I just kind of schedule that post to come out later. So at this point in time, students are just working on their own. Maybe they're working with a partner who sits next to them. I usually have students sitting in groups. So sometimes they naturally start to work with those around them. Sometimes they're working independently. It's really up to you how you want them to go through the map. But while they're going through the map and looking for the information to fill out the, the comprehension activities, I just kind of float. I check in with them and I discuss the things that they're discovering with them. I say, you know, like, what have you found out? What have you learned? What have you discovered? And I just kind of like hover and I interact with them and I just hear about what they're learning and kind of discuss it with them so I can see, you know, what are you, like, what are they getting from this? And then I can help fill in any misunderstandings, especially if we're doing it in the target language. I want to make sure that they're really getting all the information. They will tend to finish all at different times. So something that I like to do is have a fast finisher option available for them. And usually I like to make sure that the fast finisher option is related to the virtual field trip that they've been working on. So some options for fast finishers for you are GeoGuessr. And if you're not familiar with GeoGuessr, I do have a blog post on it. It is a super fun website. So awesome. 
a list of related YouTube videos to dig into a topic further, coloring sheets, reading, an infographic activity where they read and then complete an infographic based on the information that they learned, maybe a word search activity with vocabulary related to the day. Also one of my favorite things to do is to compare traditions from Cinco de Mayo to the 4th of July because a really common misconception is that Cinco de Mayo is Independence Day. And so helping them compare and contrast after they've already had that information and after they've already done the virtual field trip, they can start to say, oh, okay, these are really not the same holiday at all. I have a blog post with a bunch of different Cinco de Mayo activities that would all make really great kind of follow-ups to this lesson. I will make sure to link that in the description below, but hopefully that gives you a few ideas for things that you could have just kind of standing by. And a really nice option for a fast finisher is to let them choose. So I might set out three, four, five different activities and say, hey, pick any one of these things because I know they're still gonna be working on the topic that we are working on, but giving them that choice helps them remain engaged throughout the rest of the class period. And that's it, that's pretty much the lesson plan. I really hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and let YouTube know you like it. If you haven't yet, make sure you click that subscribe button and ring that bell so you get notified of all content I create for you in the future. Thanks.